Um, bank robbery story. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, Billy Radish Taint. God damn it. Do you guys ever run out of ginger jokes? I mean, this is fucking amazing. I've been doing this podcast since 2007. And you motherfuckers, every time I think we're out of vegetables, we're out of fucking all these different things you can call me. My God. Carrots, radishes. I mean, it's just it just never stops. We're not even up to the top of the fridge. We're still in the crisper. Um, you know, it's funny. I have a bright orange fucking refrigerator in my office, too. I keep it real. Um, bank robbery story. Hey, Billy Radish Taint. I got a bank robbery store story for your chalky powdered donut ass. This guy's just killing me with the food references here. Uh, I used to manage the teller line. Who would have thought that this was going to take off? This is fucking great. I want to hear from tellers and all the dumb ways people tried to rob your fucking bank. Banks. Um, You'd think that this would trend more. You know what I mean? Somebody came in to rob a bank and it didn't fucking work. Um, Wait a minute. Did all the bank robbers just kind of go into like identity theft? They kind of do it on like the internet, on the uh, internet now, right? Anyway, I used to manage the teller line at one of the branches of a national bank, uh, the one with the lawsuit. Which one? Um, One day, this guy with sunglasses and and basketball hat comes into the lobby and asks to see the manager like some shitty heist movie. The manager brings him into his office. Fifteen minutes later, the manager escorts the guy to a female teller and said, this man needs $25,000. The teller goes, yes, sir. Do you have a debit card? The manager interrupts and says, no, just give it to him. The teller nods and starts counting the money, shaking. The guy begins to laugh at her. Tears start streaming down her face. I'm assuming it was the bank robber. Tears start streaming down her face. I immediately go back to the back and start hitting the silent alarms and telling the tellers at the drive up that we're being robbed. I go back to the front to tell the tellers what's happening when the phone rings. Before I can get it, another teller who is known as the dumb fuck of the branch picks it up. Hello? What? We're not being robbed. No, everything's okay. (laughs) Imagine the person was talking real loud too. Oh no, the security department checking on us. It's the security department checking on us. I'm behind him saying, hang up the phone, hang up the phone. He turns to me and goes, no, this guy says we're being robbed. The guy robbing us is 10 feet from us. I finally get the dumb fuck to give me the phone and I answer in the back and explain the robber leaves with the money. The manager says the guy had a gun. He said he's going to shoot everyone in here if we didn't give him the money. I asked the female teller if she put the tracker in with the cash. She said she did. Oh, God. The cops come and ask us questions and leave. We're all waiting around for hours. The cop comes back. The cops come back with a bag of cash and two receipts saying they found the robber at a jack in the box down the street. Oh, God. So who was dumber? One receipt was for a was for was for cab fare. And the other was for a jumbo jack with extra large fries and a Coke. The rest of the money was in the bag. Thank, well, I got to tell you, if you're going to go to jail, I mean, that's one of the best ways to get caught as far as like you just had a nice fucking jumbo jack and extra large and a Coke. That sounds that's almost at this point being on a diet worth doing a little time for. Uh, thanks for all the years of laughs and good times. It means a lot. Truly go fuck yourself. Another bank robbery story. Tellers, please. I got three of them. Two more coming here. Please. For the love of comedy, keep fucking writing these in. Did you guys ever see the one where the fucking idiot was standing in line to rob the bank? He walks in and he takes out like whipped cream or shaving cream and sprays it all over his face and then stands in line. I believe it was on America's Dumbest Criminals, I believe. And he's standing there, and it's, they immediately hit the alarms. It's melting off of his face. And when he walks up to the teller, the fucking cops show up. What a fucking idiot. 
Sir, can you clean that off your face for your mugshot, please? All right, bank robbery story. Dear Mr. Burr, finally, a little respect on this podcast. Love the podcast, this person says. So, back in the late 90s, I was living in Tampa for college and worked at a bank near Bush Gardens. What a great place to go to college, Tampa. Huh? Fucking all the hot chicks walking around, all the titty bars. I mean, you're not studying. Um, college is just a delay the rest of your miserable life. So go have a good fucking time unless you're going after a dream. Other than that, if you just picked a fucking major, go to, go to college in Tampa. At least you'll have those memories. Um, Jesus, that was negative. Sorry. Uh, so back in the uh, late 90s, I was living in Tampa for college and worked at a bank near Bush Gardens, which, you know, in Tampa, that might be the name of a fucking strip club. I don't like the landing strip. Come on down to Bush Gardens. Wall the wall pubes. Um, so after opening one morning, a guy came in with his T-shirt pulled over his head. Think Beefus doing Cornholio. There's a great reference. I am Cornholio. I need tiki for my bunghole. Um, he walked up to the teller next to me and yelled, give me hundreds and fifties. She just froze and said, what? He had a tire iron in one hand. <laughs> He came in to rob the bank like he was going to clean up the neighborhood. He had a tire iron in one hand and kept using the other to hold open the neck hole to see out of it. It kept closing up because he was shaking so bad. Oh, this poor bastard. I said, I think he wants your larger bills, but this dumbass doesn't see this bulletproof glass. I started laughing. Oh, my God. You just took, but you took a gamble that he didn't have anything else. The guy took the iron and hit the glass and didn't even scratch it. He ran outside with nothing, still attempting to hold the neck hole of his shirt open. My manager was pissed, but I said he wasn't my, in my teller window, so technically I didn't not cooperate with, his, with the demands. Dude, you got a fucking law degree in your future, man. You should become a lawyer. Um, anyway... A detective came in with two FBI agents and they were watching the video. They called me in when they saw me laughing on the video and asked what was said. They laughed when I told them. (laughs) I got to get some FBI agents. Any FBI agent, you want to come in, just say you work for a certain service and I want to hear all your dumb fucking uh, criminal stories. Um, I got transferred to a different branch a month later. And that one didn't have glass in the lobby. I'm sure a a fuck you planned by the manager. Absolutely. They wanted you to get your mind right. Oh, this guy thinks he's all bulletproof behind the glass. We're going to send him to a fucking, our first bank from 1860 that we never fucking did a remodel on. Anyway, P.S. Now I'm a detective. I was going to say, I knew you had something beyond this job in your future. I think of that day every time I go to a bank robbery. Come back to South Florida soon. Wow. Wow, you got balls, man. You got balls. I mean, yeah, just fucking give them the money. You put the fucking tracker in there and then, you know, go eat your brown bag lunch and be happy nothing happened to you. But thank God you didn't or else, you know, I'd have nothing to talk about during this part of the podcast. Jesus Christ, the dumb fuck doesn't know. (laughs) What did you say to him? I think he wants your larger bills, but this dumbass doesn't see the bulletproof glass. Well, I guess once you have a fucking T-shirt over your goddamn head, that's probably a good good indication he doesn't have a gun. All right, funny, quote, robbery story. Uh, Yeah, this this goes straight across. If you own a store, somebody tried to mug you or whatever, I want to hear these ones. Um, All right, funny robbery story. Hey, hey, Billy Bear back in it, burr. So I used to work in a pizza place. I really wish you said parlor for my accent. A pizza parlor. Uh, that was very busy. That was a very busy spot after the bar let out because uh, we had huge slices and were open until 4 a.m. Well, absolutely. Every town 
has the big slice of pizza back on the East Coast. You got to have it. Um, we used to have this great place in Boston. One of the, and it was a great slice of pizza, too. It was basically a, a double wide slice of pizza. It was this bar called Dominic's. It was right across from the legendary Nick's Comedy Stop, where I started 30 years ago on March 2nd. And uh, one of the big thrills in my life was when I got invited over there to hang out. And I got to hang out with the late, great uh, Kevin Knox, Frank Santarelli, Don Gavin. They were all there, all the fucking legends. And they'd be over there having a couple of pops. And all you had to do as, as a new comic was shut the fuck up, buy a round, and you get to hear some of the greatest stand-up comedy sto- stories ever. And right next to the, to the bar was a window. It was a pizza place that was part of it. And at the end of the night, after you had a bunch of fucking drinks and you needed to air quote sober up, that was back when we thought if you had a double slice of pizza, you could actually drive a car 60, 70 miles an hour down the fucking Southeast Expressway through the Central Lottery. And you'd go over there, and it was just the fucking best. And it was just a bunch of drunk people, drunk guys, drunk chicks, standing out there folding these slices and shoving it down our fucking pie holes. Oh, that was one of the saddest days ever. Now there's a W Hotel there. A soulless W Hotel. Oh, it's so awful. It's just so awful what corporations do to the vibes of towns. They just kill the fucking vibes. Um, And then because there's no vibe in their hotels, they then have to create a vibe with uh, with aquarium lighting or whatever the fuck it is they do over there. All right, funny robbery story. Um, And yeah, the pizza place. It was a very busy spot after the bar let out because we had huge slices and were open until 4 a.m. Now, while I worked there, tons of employees came and went, mainly because it was really long hours... Uh, Regular hours involved working 4 p.m. to 4 a.m. 4 to 4. Wow. So one night while working, a dude came in with a bandana on his face and he yells at me, give me all the money, while his hands is in his pockets that look like he had a gun. Without even thinking, I say, go fuck yourself. (laughs) And then he starts laughing, takes the bandana off and asks, how'd you know it was me? Apparently, he used to work there, but I had no clue who he was. He took me, it took me a second to even recognize him after telling me this. So if this had been a real robber, I would have either just thwarted him by standing firm or I would have got my ass beat or killed. People, there is no fucking reason to ever get killed in a robbery on purpose. Okay? Don't listen to these stories and be like, I want to have a funny story so I can write into a podcast. Please do not do any of this shit. Um, especially if you're working 4 p.m. to 4 a.m. slinging fucking pizzas and hash to a bunch of drunks. Anyways, just thought it was funny. Thought it was funny. It's fucking legendary. Just thought it was funny that I was so pissed that someone tried to rob us that I had no regard for my own safety. Please tell me they at least gave you employee of the fucking month. Give me all the fucking money. Go fuck yourself. I don't even feel like I can. You know what? In honor of you, I'm not going to say go fuck yourself because you already did it to end this podcast. Uh, That is amazing. So please keep your, uh, if I was a dictator, things coming in. Tell me your robbery stories because these are amazing. All right, that's the podcast, everybody.